Let's talk some spring football. First up, Southern Miss Golden Eagles head coach Will Hall on Locked On Sunbelt. You are Locked On Sunbelt, your daily podcast on the Sunbelt Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, Dave Schultz, Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day. Today's episode brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first uh, purchase. Okay, uh, we've done a little bit of Cajuns over the last few days, but hey, hey, they're on a winning streak. What can you do? Uh, let's talk some spring football. We get to chat it up with our buddy Will Hall of the Southern Miss Golden Eagles. Uh, we talk about the course correction midseason last year. Uh, we talk about it's time to win, and you don't get a lot of honesty like that from coaches. They always have a bunch of excuses, and at least heading into the season, uh, Will Hall is not making any. And then he is one of the few guys that's all in on this NIL, and he has been very prominent in social media uh, on it. It was a great conversation. We talk about the quarterback competition, uh, and I knew there was a reason I liked Will Hall. He's very excited about, wait for it, his tight ends. Let's get to it. He is the head coach of the Southern Miss Golden Eagles. He is Will Hall. Dave Schultz back on another edition of Lockdown Sunbelt, your team every day. Always thrilled to catch up with our buddy, the head coach of the Southern Miss Golden Eagles. He is Will Hall. All right, coach, a little bit odd. Uh, explain what's going on. You guys had your spring game this past weekend, but you're having two more practices. What is that all about? And thanks for hopping on Lockdown Sunbelt. How are you? I'm doing great, man. Doing great. I just, you know, there's more people that have done this than just us, uh, you know, through the years and, and we've researched it and, you know, part of it was a logistical issue. We always try to have our spring game on a weekend where our baseball team's at home because we have, you know, an unbelievable baseball program and, and uh, you know, we're top 10 in attendance nationally every year. So it's always a fun weekend. This weekend, it just wasn't able to work. The two week or the weekend before Easter, we were on the road in baseball, and the two weekends after Easter, we were on the road. So the only way we've been able to have our spring game with a baseball weekend was to do it over Easter, and I, I'm just don't, not going to do that. Right. So, uh, so we ended up having it a weekend where, you know, a baseball team's not at home, and and we chose to just have two days after that weekend to work on fundamentals with our guys that have played a lot of football, your really experienced players, your, your, you know, your older guys that have played kind of over 2000 snaps of real mm -hmm. football, work on fundamentals going into the off season with them. And then also take these two days to go live with your inexperienced kids, you know, your red shirt freshmen, your early enrollees, your sophomores that are growing and really focus on them for two days from a live setting and build depth. So, we had the first of those days today, Dave. It was really good. Got a lot of good work with those young men. And then we'll have one more Thursday, and then that'll be it. He's the head coach of the Southern Miss Golden Eagles, Will Hall. All right, so before we look forward, let's look back. You guys went through a midseason change. Uh, that got you at least a win over the Raging Cajuns is what it did. <laughs> um, so you pulled back from being OC. You hired a new DC. Tell us about, you know, the uh, the course correction last year midseason. Yeah, you know, Dave, when I look back on my tenure here over three years uh, and evaluate it, uh, probably my biggest mistake was coming in here and, and being the head coach and also running the offense, you know. Uh, being an offensive coordinator is something I've always done my whole life and, and had a great run at it. If I hadn't, you know, had success doing it, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to right. you today. Right. I just don't know if you can – or let me say, I, I know that I can't do that anymore. Uh, and and when, you, when I did a lot of research on it, when you look back over the last 50 years of college football – I think only two head coaches that call their own plays have won a national title, with that being Steve mm. Spurrier in 96 and Jimbo Fisher when he was at Florida. Mm. And both of them had Heisman Trophy winning quarterbacks that year. So, <laughs> you know, I think when you choose to do the uh, a side of the ball and coordinate it and be the head coach, you have to give on something. And I never gave on being a head coach. You know, when you look at our program, uh, we've been phenomenal in recruiting. Our culture's great. Our academics are great. And I just never gave on that. And I think it cost us offensively. And uh, so you live and you learn. And that's something that I, if I could go back and do it over again, that I would probably do different. But, you know, moving forward, we've recruited really well. We just had the number one class in the Sun Belt. 
Our last two years before that, we've been top three in the league. We've been able to retain those players. And I love turning this over to Chip Long. He's an established coordinator uh, that, that has done great things at all different types of levels. He's also been a guy that's come in in a situation similar to ours where we had to be good quickly, and he's been able to do that. We hired a young defensive coordinator that's a proven commodity as well that came in and, and changed it quickly. So uh, I like where we're headed. Like I said, we've recruited well. We've accumulated a lot of talent. We've been able to keep it. I think our culture is really, really good. I think that's shown by how we've been able to retain our players. And now, you know, uh, I, I like our schemes and, and where we're at. And like I said, man, it's year four. You know, you're talking to a guy, Dave, that's, you know, man, I've won wherever I've been as, as a small college head coach, as a coordinator at other places. And, uh, you know, nobody is uh, more eager to win and wants to win more than me, and it's certainly time to. So as we go into year four, we've got a lot of reason for optimism, and uh, we feel good about where we're at and where we're headed. All right, so we'll get to that. So some of this is is in practice, but some of it was put into play. So what was that like when you gave up the reins of the offensive coordinator? I'd say it probably – uh, you know, brought down the stress level, but I know the kind of coach that you are. So maybe, maybe not uh, during that, but it had to be, did it clear your mind that you're able to see the big picture instead of focusing on, all right, what's first and 10, second and seven, third and four. And now I can see the big picture and I can coach the team instead of having to coach the nuance of the offense from play to play to play. I think so. I think so. I think, uh, you know, I think anybody that knows me and, and my former players would all say, and I think, again, you can see through the fact that we haven't lost a lot of our good players in the portal or anything, I think our players would tell you that I'm a player's coach. Uh, I'm very hard on them. We're a very disciplined program, but I love my players. And so, you know, when the changes of, uh, you know, change of possession, going from offense to defense, defense to offense, special teams, I'm able to get with those players in the heat of the battle moments and talk with them about how we want to handle that and what the strategy is moving forward from a big picture standpoint, instead of just being in the minor in, in the in the minute details of it, if you will. And uh, I think that's been good. Uh, you know, wish I would have done it sooner, but I didn't. Sure. And uh, like I said, hindsight's twenty twenty. I take responsibility for that. You know, you live and you learn, man. We're in an ever changing landscape that you're trying to stay on top of in every way, and. Uh, I feel good about, you know, a lot of things we've done here. And I think we're on on, on track for a lot of success moving forward. Uh, knowing Will Hall as I do, uh, he is not harder on his players than he is on him. So we, we, do, we do know that. No one takes more responsibility for his program than Will Hall does. Okay, let's take a timeout. When we come back, Will Hall is very honest. It is time to win. It's basically put up or shut up time uh, for Southern Miss as uh, he is heading into his fourth year as the head man with the Golden Eagles. We will do that right after I tell you about FanDuel. It's playoff time in the NBA and NHL. Baseball's in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks all on an app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. What are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. All right, Dave Schultz, uh, Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day. Let's uh, continue our conversation with uh, the head coach of the Southern Miss Golden Eagles, Will Hall. Uh, he's basically saying, I got to win this year or I'm not going to be back, and yet, whether true or not, you have to appreciate his honesty heading into the 2024 season. All right, so let's talk about, like you mentioned, it's time to win. All right, I didn't get that out of nowhere. That's what you you brought that on yourself. Uh, it is not going to be an easy Sunbelt West, right? Uh, he had all kind of quarterback issues over there at Texas State. They end up with the Sunbelt Player of the Year, in Jordan McLeod. You do have experience coming back with the Cajuns. Uh, South Alabama is breaking in uh, somebody new. Arkansas State has, you know, an up-and-coming sophomore. So uh, you're saying it's time to win, but that is not – I mean, the challenge is there. It's not going to be an easy uh, division. Brian Vince, you know, Coach Vincent over at ULM only turned over half of the roster. So there's a whole 
a lot of competition uh, stacked up in the West uh, in 2024. Oh, there's no question. And, and, you know, Dave, I've got great respect for the Sun Belt overall and the Sun Belt West. Phenomenal league. I think it's the best group of five league in the, league in the country. And uh, like you said, man, I got great respect for Coach Dez over at, at Louisiana. And I know Coach Vincent at Monroe. And, and man, what Coach Jones got going last year in his third year at Arkansas State was phenomenal. You know, South Alabama's in some transition. Troy's in some transition. But they've been kind of the kingpins right. of the West for the last right. two years. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and then Texas State, man, what a phenomenal job Coach Kenny did last year in year one. So there is going to be a lot of co competition. But, you know, man, we're Southern Miss, and this is year four. And like I said, we've, we've had – I came here, Dave, and said, you know, we have to stack three consecutive years of recruiting on top of each other to put ourselves in position to have the roster to compete in the best group of five conference in America. Well, we've done that now, you know. So there isn't a whole lot of excuses to be made. It's year four. We do need to win, and uh, it's time to win. It's 2024 in college football. Yes, I said it, and you can people can say, well, why would you say that? Well, it's the reality of it. Whether I said it or not, it is right. what it is. It's year four. Right. You don't win. You know, I mean, like, it is what it is. You know me. I yeah. keep it real, man. I mean, it's time to win. It's year four, and if we don't, then I probably won't be here. And if we do, it'll be real good, and we'll be here for a long time like we always wanted to be because I love this place. But I feel good about where we're at. I feel good about what we've recruited and what we've built. And, I, you know, I think uh, I think it's going to be a very difficult schedule. And I think, we, I, you know, I certainly feel like we're up to the task. He's head coach Will Hall of the Southern Miss Golden Eagles. All right, let's talk quarterback. You have – a quarterback competition. I'm not going to be foolish enough to ask you who your starting quarterback is, although I have asked you that for many, many years. How did the competition go in spring? Let's just do an open-ended question like that. Yeah, you know, I think uh, in the spring game, uh, I think that Tate Rodemaker really, really showed a lot of poise, threw the ball around really well. He's a guy that can get out of the pocket and make some plays with his feet, too, when he has to. He's played a lot of football. Ethan Crawford. <clears throat> Excuse me, Dave. Ethan Crawford, the young man that finished the season starting for us and playing a lot, will be a true sophomore. He really embraced the competition of bringing in Tate. He was dynamic throughout spring. And then the early enrollee, John White, really showed that he's got a lot of poise and accuracy and moxie, and he's going to be a great player for us too. Billy Wiles, who started the year starting for us, is a consistent performer that's going to give you exactly you, – you know exactly what you're going to get out of him every day. So – we, we've gone from a place that didn't have a lot of quarterbacks when we got here to have a lot of talented kids that can really do a lot of things. And uh, so it was good. You know, Dave, man, I went, you know, when I went into this off season, I said, man, I'm going to, I'm going to go back to being me and being who I am. And, you know, one of the ways, I mean, we went live with our quarterbacks four times this spring, which a lot of people don't mm. do, but they were fully live four times uh, in the three scrimmages and the one 50, 50 day, uh, where we tackled a lot, and uh, it was good. It was good to make those guys have to be live to where they could show everything they could do. So uh, I don't know exactly who's going to win that job right now, but I do know that whoever does will have risen to the top, if you will, from a lot of competition. I think we're going to play good quarterback, have good quarterback play this fall. All right, so I'll ask you another open-ended question. I, I probably asked you this as well before. Um you know, it doesn't matter when I find out or even, you know, goal, you know, Golden Eagles fans find out as much as they want. When do you decide and let that decision be made internally once camp happens? I, I you know, obviously when camp happens, someone's taking the number one. I guess you could split up the reps, you know, to begin camp just to see where we are. But somewhere along the way, you do have to prepare for the season. When do you like to have that decision? And when do you think you'll make that internally? Do you think you'll make it before camp or do you give it a week into camp? When do you like to have that decision made so everybody's on the same page moving forward? The, the the latest I will make that decision is the week before game week. All right. So when oh, we get into oh, the Tuesday week. practice before game week is when we kind of flip over. So you're two weeks out of the first game. That's when you break fall camp okay. and right. you start going, you know, for us, we start going kind of 50 50 days that week where we go 50% of the practice is good on good and then 50% of the practice will be getting ready for Kentucky. At that point, when we start splitting up scout teams and go into a game week setting, we will we will make that decision at the latest. That's when we made it last year. That's when I've always done it throughout my career. 
uh, on oh. that. Now, that's the latest. If it starts that's splitting the itself before then, we'll make the decision when it happens. But, again, Dave, you know me. I'm not one that, you know, hides things. I'm pretty honest and straightforward. When it happens, if it happens before that, we'll do it. You know, I don't – you know, I'm pretty – pretty honest and upfront with it with everybody does the team recognize that sometimes before the coaches do or before the coaches announce it because i mean the, you know these guys are football players they 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 can see what's going on more than you know the, the the media covering things they they see what's going on in practice do they get an idea before you actually make the decision uh you would like for it to happen at the same time especially with your older experienced guys that know what it takes you know i think you got to be careful sometimes you know uh with I mean, we're, we're coaches, right? I've been doing this for 20 years. Uh, we're, we're paid to do this where kids are, are paid to, you know, that they're in the locker room. So, so your older guys that are experienced and really care about winning, you would like for them to notice it and know, but you got some, some other young guys that, that may not be there yet that that are still learning what college football is about. So, uh, you know, you don't want too many opinions in the matter. You want the well, experts. Sure, sure. You want well, the experts' opinions in the matter. You know, so I don't know if they have to give their opinion, but they can yeah. see they can see what direction things are going. And giving the opinion is reserved no, for yeah. a very special. Well, field. you would like you would like for it to be an obvious deal. You know, you would sure. like for it to be where, hey man, this guy's the starter. There's no doubt. You know, and uh, and hopefully it will be. Uh, and and I think I think the one thing I think we've got is we got kids in the room that are really really good. They support each other, and they're highly competitive. You know, I mean, they, they've not – you know, we had a lot of – all three of them were coming back, or two of them were coming back, and we we early enrolled the, the number one quarterback in Mississippi that was all-time passing leader from high school, and then we, we signed a kid that had played 23 games at Florida State. And nobody batted an eye. They just came to work every day. So that's what you want to see, and I think that's filtered throughout our program. He, all right, one more timeout. We'll come back and wrap up our conversation with Golden Eagles head coach Will Hall, he talks about being all in on the NIL. Let me tell you about game time. Game time is now an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the game time app actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch. With killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guaranteed. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. Save up to 60% off buying last minute for sports, concerts, comedy, theater. You get the zone deal. Save even more when you choose the section and let game time choose the seats. All in pricing. Toggling this feature shows the total up front with no surprise fees at checkout. Plus, you get these great panoramic views from your seat in the app before you buy. Game time ticket coverage. Your purchase is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticket industry. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N C O L L E G E for twenty dollars off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets. Lowest price guaranteed. All right, Dave Schultz, Lockdown Sunbelt, your team every day. Let's wrap things up with the head coach of the Southern Miss Golden Eagles. You don't see too many head coaches, at least in the group of five scenario, going all in on NIL, but Will Hall has done that so far, certainly on social media, uh, and he explains why uh, right here on Lockdown Sunbelt. He's Will Hall, the head coach of the Southern Miss Golden Eagles. All right, let's talk about some other uh, key positions that you got to replace. You got to replace super back Frank Gore Jr. I don't have any idea how you go about doing that. Do you have to? Do these guys have to show if they can pass the ball before they can play running back at, at Southern Miss? <laughs> I hope not. I hope we're really good at quarterback. That's the goal. You know, the goal is to be really good at quarterback where we don't have to do that so much anymore unless it's a trick play that Coach Long wants to run or anything. But, you know, the only way to replace a great talent is to have recruited really well before he leaves. When you look at the Georgias and the Ohio States and Alabamas, they replace them every year because they recruit really well. And, you know, we hope we've done that. We certainly think we have. You know, Drake Clark's coming back. He had a really good year last year as a transfer from Memphis. He'll be a senior. Kenyon Clay 
will be a redshirt sophomore. He had the 29-yard run at Louisiana last year for a touchdown. Really promising young player. And then we got two young guys, J.Q. Gray, who we redshirted last year, will be a redshirt freshman. And Jalen Washington was an early enrollee, true freshman that was the North Mississippi Player of the Year. So we got four guys that were highly recruited, uh, you know, and, and, and some with experience, some not so much. But that's the only way to replace a great player is to have recruited really well before he leaves. And and hopefully we've done that. All four of them have really shown signs this spring of, of being breakout players. Any other key positions that need to be uh, filled with, a new? I'd say, new starters, but maybe even newcomers? Yeah, I think for us, you know, when we inherited this program three years ago, there was a void in offensive line from a number standpoint and a talent standpoint. And there was a void at quarterback from a number standpoint and a talent standpoint. That's something we've addressed year by year. Uh, I think at offensive line at group of five, you know, that's something that you can't really lean on the portal as much. Those guys get eaten up by the power five guys. You've got to sign high school kids and develop. When you look at the great Louisiana teams, Dave, you know, through the from the Hudspit to the Napier years and all those old linemen that went to the NFL, they were high school kids that were developed. Right. And, uh, that great run that, that, that both Coach Hudspeth and Coach Napier had. And I think that resonates with us. For three years, we've recruited really good high school kids. They've been in our program. We've developed them. They're now redshirt sophomores, true sophomores, redshirt freshmen. And uh, so they are young, but, man, they can play. So, you know, we feel like that we're going to have a sleeker, more developed, uh, more talented offensive lineman out there than what we've had since we've been here. And so that, that's been a, been a big thing this spring is making sure we improve right there. And then at tight end, you know, uh, we, yes. we, brought in, we brought in two transfers at tight end. Uh, we signed one of the top players in the state of Mississippi, the, the private school player of the year that will be here this summer. And then we had a true freshman that played a lot of minutes, started some last year that's back, and a red shirt freshman, a kid that we red shirt. So now we've got, we've got five tight ends on the roster that are legitimate really good group of five football players. And so I think uh, numerically we've got more and, and and quality. We've got more right there. So O-line and tight ends was two areas that we felt like we really needed to improve on. And we think we have. See, I knew there was a reason I like you. You like throwing to uh, the tight end. We all know that that is the biggest mismatch uh, offensively that you can have. All right, let's wrap things up with the head coach of the Southern Miss Golden Eagles. Uh, you know, again, we're all on our little own little social media bubble, but I do follow you uh, in the Twitterverse, and I'm not sure I've seen another head football coach, group of five or otherwise, uh, all in on uh, the NIL. It feels like you do a daily thing. Please, please contribute what you can. Uh, how did you come about doing this, and what can you do as the head coach? Uh, and how much progress have you seen since you I think basically since spring practice or the new year started, you've kind of been all in on let's get this going for the Southern Miss Collective. Yeah, you know, I think it's new and I think it's different, Dave. Uh, I think change scares people sometimes, uh, which is understandable, you know, but but this is where college football and college athletics is going. And I just think it's a huge advantage for Southern Miss because, as you know, we have such a passionate fan base. Like I said, I mean, there's 5,000 people at Pete Taylor Park every weekend. There's 18,000 people in the Rock, even when we haven't been winning. So we have a fan base that is real and almost Power Five-like. So to me, if everybody that's a Southern Miss fan can just get involved, you know, I mean, we can be rolling like a Power Five school. And at that standpoint, you know, once that becomes where it is, then, I mean, we can run, you know, that gives us a significant advantage relative to our competition. And sure. so, uh, you know, as a coach, you're always looking for ways you can have an advantage. Uh, you know, Alabama certainly has their advantages. Georgia has theirs. Ohio State has theirs. Well, at the group of five looking for ours, I think this can definitely be our edge. And I'm just trying to educate. I've seen over 90 people since January 1st. Uh, we've grown our collective considerably. And we're growing it every day and uh, just trying to change the narrative that, that that this is Southern Miss's edge. Well, there are some teams in the Sun Belt that, you know, have their own fan base in Power 5 states, right? Like the Cajuns do not. That is an overlap with LSU. It is what it is. But Georgia Southern has their fan base. Marshall, the Thundering Herd, 
has their fan base. Probably App State, which is surrounded by Power 5 schools in little lovely Boo, North Carolina, has their fan base. And in a state that you have two major universities in Ole Miss and Mississippi State, I've been impressed with the time that, I, you know, mostly with the Mobile thing. Uh, but coming back to Lafayette, Southern Miss has their own. It may not be the biggest, uh, but they have their own separate fan base, separate from the Power 5 schools in the state of Mississippi. We certainly do, and we're very, very passionate. And uh, I'm excited, you know, about how they're embracing this collective. I'm excited about how we are changing the narrative and growing. And I'm excited about rallying them all together. And I think we could look up in two years and really have taken off in this thing as it grows gradually over time. He's Will Hall. He is the Southern Miss Golden Eagles head football coach hopping on Lockdown Sunbelt. Always appreciate your time, Coach. Uh, hopefully you get a little time off over the next couple of months before uh, – uh, practice starts again at the end of July. We will see you in New Orleans at the Sunbelt Media Days. Thanks so much, Coach. Man, I really appreciate you, Dave. Always appreciate our time together. Thanks, man.